Hi, this is Chuck. Thank you for watching. Last weekend I was pulling some pins together that had to go out and my pin press went belly up on me. As you can notice, the metal frame here is bent back so I cannot get a straight push on my piston and I'm, I'm concerned I'm going to end up breaking my, my pins when I go to try and press them together. Um, this is a bit of a disappointment because I spent a lot of money on this just a couple of years ago. And while it did work, I can tell you I didn't mistreat it or anything. So it's like, hey, what am I going to do? I really don't want to spend the money for another pin press. When I started turning a couple of years ago, I had a lot of trouble with the, the clamps to try and go off and press the pin parts together. That's why I initially went off and made an investment in the commercial pin press. So I didn't want to go off and start to use the clamps again because I, I just don't have the skill level or I wasn't making it work right. But it was always a problem for me both in the, the pressing the pin together and also in using clamps to try and drill a straight hole through for the, uh, the drill press. So I kind of came up with a solution that actually worked pretty well and it didn't cost me but about four dollars. So I want to show you guys what I did on that. It's a combination pin press and pin maker's vise. You can use it for uh, pin blanks or bottle stopper blanks or just about anything at all. So let me show you what I did and hopefully it uh, may be something that can work for some of you guys and gals. It's a pretty simple um, item to put together. Um, I had some scrap wood and that's what I used basically to build it except for a couple of hardware parts. The base is basically a 1x6 piece of uh, pressure treated wood that's left over from a deck project and it's about 14 and a half inches long. I've attached a piece of 2x2 two two hickory here and 2x2 two two maple on that side because that's what I had laying around in the shop. I believe this piece is close to 3 inches long and that one on the other side on the maple is about 2.5 inches. The only two pieces of hardware I bought was a 12 inch long half inch threaded rod and the half inch nut that accompanied it. As you can see I drilled a hole through the piece of hickory, I epoxied the nut in and then I went ahead and threaded the rod through it. After I glued the piece of hickory and maple to the 1x6, I turned it over and just put a couple screws in just to be safe. To the end of the rod, I turned a nice cherry handle. I turned a cap for the end of the rod. I've got a half inch hole that's unthreaded that the rod sits into and I don't know why I put a penny in it. I think it's because I had one in my pocket and it was kind of burning a hole in it. Um, and to that just slips right onto the rod. Now at this point you really can't use it. Even though I could hold this so it doesn't turn, what's going to happen is once you start to press the pin together, there's going to be turning on this and you're really going to have a problem trying to press it without the, the pin kit itself starting to turn on you and potentially damaging the blank of the pin itself. So the solution I came up with was I had a piece of some high density polyethylene and I recessed a little hole in it here, not much, just used an um, inch and a quarter Forstner bit and maybe drove it down about a sixteenth of an inch just so that it would sit here. And what happens is when you turn it, because this is flush against the piece of, of base right here, this won't turn so it actually then just presses forward. Um, if you try and do it without some type of a, a press piece at the end, it's not going to work for you. Then I basically just cut another piece of the HDPE here and I use those for the, the ends to press the pin kit into. Um, I tried using wood instead of the HDPE and it worked but I, I didn't like the results I got and since I had some of this lying around, I just went ahead and used it. I'm much happier. I think if you're able to use a, somehow a piece of PVC or maybe even some metal or something like this that you're able to work it would be okay. Um, and I'm not saying the wood doesn't work, but I just think that this worked a lot better for me. I have two pins that I turned in preparation for this video. And let's go ahead and we'll press them together now and just kind of show you how this works before we go over to the drill press and I show you how I use it as a... a a, a pin maker's vise. All right, we're going to press two of the um, the slimline pins together. The first one will be more of a traditional one, and the second one is a modified one without the center band on it. And I've drilled a little five sixteenths hole into the first piece here, 
And I'm going to try and set it up and then I'll get my hand out of the way so that you can watch the video on this. Uh, the one thing that I've noticed right now is it's kind of important not to over tighten this. You know, you don't need to do that. You just kind of set it up, make sure it's level. And then the piece should just pop right into place for us. Okay. And that's what we've done here. So I'm just kind of holding it down. Normally I would have clamped this shut. But you can see it just kind of goes in nice and easy. And if you notice the, the video on this while it was turning, that the um, portion back here was turning, but that my flat piece here, because it can't turn, because it's flush with the base, um, it just effectively just pushed it right in. Now before I put the next piece in, I'm going to go ahead and put the clamp onto the, to the bench, um, which is really the way I designed this to go off and happen. Easy as pie. Alright, and with this kit, when we put the transmission in, we'll take it into the indented line. I always like to take mine out at that point just to make sure that it's the right depth I put the ink quill in. Now notice I'm not using any hands on it, just a little bit just to guide it. Because it is pressing pretty good. I could hold this in here. Alright. And I'm writing that indent, so let's just see if I've gone in enough. Alright. It looks perfect. So at this point, all I have to do is just the final assembly. I'll put the center ring in, and then put the top in, and we're ready to go. It's a handsome little pin. Alright, so... So once again, I try and make sure that it's as straight as I can possibly get it. I like to make sure that this is set good onto my end cap and then just press it in. Um, so not too bad. And it just brings it in nice and tight as I tighten it up. Alright, we'll put the transmission in now, and then we'll join the two pieces together. When I'm putting the transmissions in, I just got to make sure that I support it as we go along, as I press it, just to make sure I'm getting a, a nice solid fix on it, and I am it's not having any troubles tightening down. Yeah, and that's much, that's the length I prefer. Okay, and with this particular pin, there isn't a, a center band, so basically we just put this on, and that nice cherry pin is ready to go. Alright, I've laid the, the ruler here for scale. Um, note that the inside um, distance between the two blocks, I've got it about uh, 7 and 3 quarters inches, which is about 19 centimeters. Um, you can certainly make it a little bit longer if you need to. Right now, with my blocks, I've got enough space in here that I can press a, a, a bolt-action pin with no problems at all. Um, not a lot of play left, as you can see. Probably another half inch or so on the inside. If I were to just measure what I've got right now, the inside of it's five and a half inches. I could, if I wanted to, take that piece out to buy a little bit more room. Gets me closer to six inches. Um, I press into the wood, but again, I think I get better results when I do this way. Um, so if there was one thing I'd change, it'd be maybe move these uh, about a half an inch further apart. Um, and otherwise, this part's fine. Let's move over now to the drill press, and let me show you how to use this as a pin maker's vise. In making the pin maker's vise, I wanted to make sure that the cuts in my alignment blocks were as accurate as possible.
With the alignment blocks in the vise, at this point the only thing needed to do is basically align the blank to the drill bit and tighten it down with the clamp and we should be all set and ready to drill it. And it still looks right and I've got it clamped down. So assuming that our alignment blocks are square and we've got nice accurate cuts to guide the pin blank, we should come out with a pretty perfect pin blank. Well, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'd certainly be very, very interested if anybody has any ideas on how to improve this or make it work better. Thanks a whole bunch again, and please keep those positive comments coming.